Hello everyone, we are here, we are live, we are ready to go, and as you can see, we are in mission control, because I just wanted to show, I've been picking up contracts as we've been going along, and you can see that there are lots and lots and lots of them, so I got kind of a plan for the next few streams, but today's stream is going to be about getting Kerbals up into space, and to stay, we're going to be building a space station. A modest space station to start off with, but of course we will be expanding on it. And a few of these contracts, I'm not going to go through them all, do have to do with the space station that we hope to be knocking off today. But there is one contract, if I go over to this, that... I've been kind of not going there, but I finally have had enough. This is in the prototype marketplace. This has come up in the stream before. People have asked me, why don't you use this? And what the prototype marketplace is, well, first of all, it does come from the giving aircraft purpose contract pack. And what it does is it allows you to purchase technology. And the only one is available is the only one really that I'm interested in. It's been here for a long time and I finally, I got, I'm gonna do it, I don't care. Uh, command seats, I, I wanna have a command seat. There are things I want to do, um, like that helicopter that you saw in the last stream, I wanna increase its seating capacity. The command seat is a perfect uh, vehicle for doing that. As well, I wanted to build a Jeep. I got an idea for what to do with a Jeep type of vehicle. Not this stream, but probably coming up in the near future. And for that, I need a command seat. And I looked in the tech tree, and it's still quite a ways away. And I'm like, what the heck? Why is a chair such a high bit of technology? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend 2,500 curb bucks. And boom, there we go. I Whoa, that is... You must have... A, Okay, I'm not even going to look at this. <laughs> that bothers me. Okay, um, let's go away. <laughs> don't like all the zeros. <laughs> but I should now have command seats available. So that's what I wanted to do is just to get command seats. Also, what's going to be of a high premium in the near future is collecting science. I have unlocked some new science part that I've... One of which I've made a little bit of a use of. I now have the Gravmax Gravioli Detector. I also have the Magnetometer. Um, I want to uh, start putting up some probes and start sucking in some science so I can advance up the tech tree. Yeah, there's the command seat. I can see that it's there. But like I said, today is station. So let's open up Contracts Plus window here. And we're going to add, I've got to look at these contracts. What ones here have to do with space stations? There's three of them. I know there's three. Do, 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 do. There's one, launch our first space station. So we're going to create a new mission here. This is simply going to be space station. I'm going to add that one to the mission. We have our first docking here. We're going to add that one to space stations. And that's Kerbin Station. And getting being up in orbit for 30 days. That's going to be done in the space station. So now if I go over to here. This is a great way to keep all of your contracts uh, controlled. There we go. So there are our three contracts I hope to finish off today. So let's take a look quickly at launching the space station. This isn't the stock one. This is the one that comes from stations and bases redone i think is what it's called uh it's in the list in the description if, if i got that wrong um but basically i mean it needs to generate power and, and have communications and stuff but it it needs to support four kerbals and i now have the doo -doo -doo -doo, hitchhiker can newly freshly unlocked in fact i needed to unlock that uh, in order to make this contract become available and this conveniently happens to be able to seat four Kerbals uh, and I'm uh, not going to use it. <laughs> Instead I'm going to use this. This is just the um, the Mark 1 crew cabin. Now you might be wondering why, why are you doing this? Why are you just using the Mark 1 crew cabin and not the hitchhiker if you want to host four Kerbals? The reason is is because I have um, a strategy in place from the strategy mod that is engineer focus is what it's called and it gives me bonuses on completing contracts that have to do with stations and bases 
but I need to have an engineer aboard. And if I put the hitchhiker up, I plan on, by the way, launching this uncrewed and then sending a crew up there to dock with it. If uh, I send up the hitchhiker without an engineer aboard, then this contract will be satisfied. I won't have an engineer and I won't get the bonus that's here. So what I'm going to do is send up a very small station that can only hold two Kerbals, dock a vessel that can hold two Kerbals together. That's space for four Kerbals. And I'll have an engineer, obviously, on the vessel. So that's the entire kind of plan there. Okay, let's get started with designing this space station. Uh, so we're going to go to coupling. And I now have the Clampatron, regular Clampatron docking port. So that's going to go on that end. On the other end here, I'm going to have a service bay. And inside said service bay is going to go a small set of reaction wheels. The Octo 2 probe core. And I'm also going to put in a KOS scriptable duber dob. Uh, that's for running KOS scripts. And while I'm thinking about it, we will increase the file, the disk space on this guy, and have it load up my boot file. So there we go. That's that's all ready to go. And by the way, um, the first module I'm probably going to attach to this is a hitchhiker. But I just want to kind of show something because this is going to affect the way this is going to get built. If I put on the hitchhiker, hitchhiker there, it's not going to go on like this. Obviously, there'll be some connecting connectabilities there. But if I configure the pod, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, configure the pod. There's science aboard said pod. How do we configure the said science? What am I missing here? Maybe I need to put a Kerbal aboard? Is that what it is? That seems silly. There is science that's available on this pod, but other than a crew report, obviously. Okay, um, I will, uh, this will have to be something I will have to check on in a little bit. Wow, this is really having trouble fitting on the screen. Is it low down here? No. Okay, I'm gonna do one last look. Oh, cr configure crude experiments. There it is. I don't think that was there before. I think I need, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But anyway, there are some new crude experiments I can do. I have the flight experiment. Now all of these do have some requirements. Um, this one requires 5.18 units it'll consume sorry 5.18 units of electric charge per second and it will run over a period of 14 days that is a healthy amount of electricity so i got to make sure that we can support that and it needs a minimum of two crew and they have to have a minimum um this is all like uh minimum building levels i've done that so i plan on running this flight experiment so i want to attach onto this all the requirements to run this flight experiment. That's the idea. There is a second one called the float experiment. Let's close these contracts for now. Um, it also has requirements and the one that's the kicker in the head is 25 cubic meters of volume per crew. And it needs to have a minimum of four crew. So clearly simple math gives us 100 cubic meters and to give you some perspective on how much 100 cubic meters is, if I take a look at the habitat stats down here, this is now at 11.5 cubic meters. So it needs to be approximately 10 times this size. Uh, that'll happen at some point, but <laughs> not right now. So we are going to run the flight experiment. So what I want to do... Let's turn that so it's on. There we go. So we're now running the flight experiment because when I put this on waiting, it now counts that electricity cost in here. So what we're going to do now is start adding on what's required so I can run, so I can consume, what do we got here? 5.337 units of electric charge per second for 14 days. Um, 
So one thing I'm going to have to do is improve the batteries because right now with the batteries that are aboard, which isn't very much to be honest, it's going to be able to go for 1 minute and 34 seconds. It needs to survive the curb and night, curb and night, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. So I'm going to add some batteries on this. Uh, I'm going to start with, I now have these Z1K rechargeable battery banks. I'm going to need a lot more than that. Now it's up to 4 minutes and 41 seconds. And then I want to put some sort of a structural thing on here that I can mount more batteries and solar panels and also all the life support that I'm going to need. And I was thinking that I was going to build something kind of truss structurally like. Oh, not with that. Like this kind of a thing, right? All the way down. But these truss pieces are fairly heavy as well. I'm going to be docking the ship that's going to come up at the other end of this. And I kind of wanted to build something that I could convince myself looked like a tube. So what I'm going to do, that's something that Kerbals could actually travel along. So I'm going to use instead of those structural pieces, a structural tube. Here is the 1.25 meter structural tube. And we'll give it some length like that. And then we're going to mount stuff on there. And I'm going to put another battery on this guy. Um, bum, 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 bum. Why batteries? Why is that so hard? There we go. So we're now up to that. And um, I'm going to, let's see. Let's go with, I think, six batteries here. So now this thing will last for 15 minutes at the rate at which it's consuming electricity. So what we'll do is put another bank of them down here. And okay, now it's up to 22 minutes. That's longer than a curb and night. That should be okay. And then I'm also going to put on, and I need to cover the generate, you know, how much is being consumed. Again, 5.337. One of these is only 1.6 units of electric charge per second. So I'm going to need six of them, but I'm not going to put them in a ring like that. I'm going to put like this sort of a deal. And I want to use these ones that you can extend and retract, right? That's the difference between these ones that come in the little box and these ones, which for all intents and purposes are the same. But these ones, you can't retract once you've extended them. These ones that come in the little box, you can retract once you've extended them. And we're not going to need this much power all the time. So I figure have ones that I can retract and then I can extend them as needed. So I think, yeah, I'm now up to perpetual as far as the electric. I, I, I'm covering as much as I'm consuming. And if I put this in the dark, if it's in the dark, it'll last for 22 minutes and 52 seconds. That is longer than the curb and night is at low curb and orbit. So that's looking okay. I think so. And then I think all I'm going to do is finish this off with a docking port. I'm looking at you at the back end here. We'll do, we're going to do need to do more than this, but this is now at least sort of the basic size of this thing. And this docking port is going to be a junior docking port because the ship I'm going to send up for now is only going to have a Clampatron Junior on it, not the Clampatron Senior on it. Because I actually still don't have a lot of, like if you look at the crude parts I have, I don't have a lot. I've not unlocked a lot lately. I'm still not even up to the three crude um, command pods. So this is looking kind of thing. I'm going to take this actually. Let's just grab the whole thing. Yeah. I'm going to put it like this for now. Just so this is sort of, I don't know, so I can. And this is, by the way, let's give it a name. This is going to be the WK Memorial Space Station. Named after Warrior King Kerman, who... Uh, early in this series uh, lost, uh, sacrificed his life for the good of the Kerbinok Corps. I don't think it was a choice in his matter, but you know, it happened. So we'll name the space station after him. Okay, so that's sort of looking like a thing. Now we got to think about life support. So if we go to the Mark I crew cabin, 
the Mark I crew cabin. Actually, we can take Jebediah out of here because the last thing I want to do is actually send up somebody with you. I don't want to send up anybody in this thing. Uh, we want to configure this pod and make sure that it's suitable for Kerbal habitation. So, scrubber. Never ever want to mess with the scrubber. The scrubber is what takes the CO2 out of the air and uh, your Kerbals will suffer greatly and quickly if you ever have this turned off. So you always want to make sure that's on, it's available, and it's powered. Actually, that brings me to... Well, we'll get to that in a second. Pressure control as well. I want this capsule, this cabin here, pressurized. So I want to keep that on. The water recycler takes waste water and uses electricity to generate fresh water again, as well as some other byproducts like ammonia and carbon dioxide. The why well, you want the carbon dioxide for now, I don't know. But... I'm going to turn that off for now because um, it's not really too necessary and I think uh, I'll put it on the bigger thing when I, on the hitchhiker when I bring that up. You don't need that in all your pods. But what I do want to have is this monoprop fuel cell that uses oxygen and monopropellant to generate electricity. It might be a good, it's nice to have a backup source of power generation in case things go astray. And that means I need to put on some extra oxygen. I got to remember to do that. Um, of course, remember this is just going to be in low carbon orbit. So if things go wrong, we'll always be able to get our Kerbals back down. All right. So that takes care of that. Now let's start thinking about uh, resources. So number one, nitrogen. Um, it says here that there's enough nitrogen to last for four years and 364 days. Don't let that fool you. The moment you start doing EVAs, you start losing the atmosphere and it repressurizes the capsule with nitrogen. You can use up the nitrogen really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this small pressurized tank. Might decide later exactly where these goes. We'll tweak this in a little bit. And these are oxygen tanks right now. I want to turn them to nitrogen tanks. Uh, now it says I got enough nitrogen for 27 years. Uh, I suspect I'll be giving getting more nitrogen up here at some point, but we'll see how it goes. I've never quite, I'm still not quite 100% on um, my nitrogen usage. It, uh, I'm not the best at this. Oh, I should also think about, before I get into that, communication. Um, the If I get in here and configure this pod again, configure crude experiments, this experiment the flight experiment generates data at 7.8 kilobytes per second and at 7.8 kilobytes per second the communitron 16 can only transmit at where is it here 2.2 kilobytes per second so we're going to step up our transmitting to the dts-m1 which can transmit 25 kilobytes per second i'm going to stick just one of them will be fine on the side here Extend that. There we go. So that's going to be our communication for transmitting home the experiment. Okay. Uh, what was that? Nitrogen. Okay, let's go along here. We got... What's after nitrogen? Oh. Oh, do I have to put... Oh, yes. Okay, it doesn't... I'm going to put on some Kerbals. Just put the... Yeah, the Kerbals in the right spot. It doesn't show this usage properly unless you have Kerbals to consume them. So, for instance, this thing for now is going to have... Why on earth does this not change? Radiation. Why isn't it showing me... Maybe because I don't have any oxygen and food and stuff. Let's get into oxygen and food and stuff. Let's grab one of these life support boxes. Now it's showing it. Okay, so it didn't show it. Doesn't show any until you actually put some on there. There you go. Okay, so now it's got food for 116 days for two Kerbals. And if you want to know like how much this food will last for more Kerbals, all you got to do is put more Kerbals in there and you can see it adjusts it accordingly. But for now, we're only going to have two Kerbals aboard. So I think that is going to be fine uh we should have water too it's got water for one year and 144 days so that seems okay uh nitrogen oh 
no oxygen, so let's throw on some oxygen. Let's put on an oxygen tank. So I just put on a pressurized tank. Oxygen, that's enough oxygen for 107 days. But don't forget, I also want to... It's being consumed at, where does it say here? 0 0.207 per minute. So that's a pretty low rate of consumption. If I go to the fuel cell, where's the fuel cell? This fuel cell uses up oxygen in 1.705 per second. So if I turn on that fuel cell, we'll burn through this oxygen pretty quick. How much oxygen? Oh, I know what I can do. I know how I can tell. Let's see. If I turn on the fuel cell. Oh, it won't. There's no monopropellant on board this thing, is there? No, let's put on some monopropellant. Needs monopropellant to run the fuel cell. Oh my gosh, here. Can I, let's filter this by resource. I don't have, know what. Do, 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 there, monopropellants. Do I not have any monopropellant tanks? Are you fracking, <laughs> are you kidding me? I have no containers for monopropellant yet. Well, isn't that fascinating? Okay. Um, all right. Um, I have no idea. Okay. Let, well, we, we, I guess we won't be able to run that monopropellant thing because I have no monopropellant. Oh, I can probably. I know what I can do. I have configurable containers. I have configurable, configurable, configurable containers. Let's take the smallest container I've got, like this one. You can't fool me with your lack of. Okay, we'll, we'll tweak this in a little bit. Now this is set for liquid fuel and oxygen, but if I go edit the tanks, take the liquid fuel and oxygen out, change this to there should be monopropellant right fuel cell m max add oh it's oxygen and monopropellant oh nice so it's adding both oxygen and monopropellant and i'm assuming because it's done this in, for me in the past in the right proportions Nice, nice, nice. Now, here's the question. If I turn on, sorry, I got a lot of windows open. If I now turn on the fuel cell, there it is. The oxygen, so it's here for, oh. if I close off the electricity, I'm just trying to get an idea how long I can run that fuel cell for based on what I just put on there. Still, oh, and no, it says perpetual. It's obviously, can I take, yeah, let's not count this. That's how you do it. It will run for 20 minutes. There's enough monopropellant and oxygen on this thing to run it for 20 minutes. I think that would be for an emergency situation only. So I think that should be good. gonna slide these and I'll just so they look a little better there we go so nice okay so forget you game I'm able to get my model propellants on there anyway <laughs> okay we can now put these let's turn these back on I don't need to well maybe we'll extend them too let's extend them extend okay uh, how are we doing here so we got oxygen for 407 days, that's clearly going to be fine. Water. Oh, I took my kerbals out, didn't I? No, I didn't. How can I have enough water for one year? Oh, wait. Turn off the... I know why. I bet you the mo the fuel cell produces water. Let's turn that off. Why are you being this way? There. 
water for one year, food for 116 days. That's a lot of water. Oxygen, so way more oxygen than I need. Okay. Let's uh, do some adjusting. Let's go with the small oxygen ones. Let's try this on maybe four times symmetry. We'll tweak all this in just a little bit. It's adding about a hundred days of oxygen. Kerbals are clearly living off the oxygen that's in there too. Okay, I, I think that's good for oxygen. Just feels like a ton of water. What if I take this off? Actually, what if I put this on? You can adjust these. Oops, that's four of them. I don't want that many. What if I turn this to be just food? How can that still be a hundred? Oh, there we go. That's 161 days of food. There's no uh, there's no water aboard, but maybe if I just took one of these small ones and made that one water, how much water does that make? 241 days of water, 161 days of food, 391 days of oxygen. I, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good for all of those supplies there. Okay. Um, let's see here. Stress. Yeah, it's a little cramped. That's fine. Uh, comfort. They don't have a panorama. That's the cupola module. <laughs> they don't have firm ground. That's to create gravity to do some spinny stuff. They don't have plants. That will have to come for the future. Uh, it is pressurized. That's good. What else we got here? We got radiation. Don't have to worry about because we're not going to go above the belts. The radiation belts. Reliability. Oh, we do. Uh, oh, we need more means of attitude control. Ah, that should be okay. Oh, it only has one means of communication. That's a good point. Why don't we put a little bit of backup communication on there? I'm going to just put on a couple of communitrons. Right in there to that oh they're gonna be I was hoping they wouldn't stick out the doors but let's see maybe if we what if I put it on radial that's what I'm thinking about that should be one on the other side too tweak the position of this a little bit That should be all right, I think. Can the doors close over those? Pretty sure, yeah. All right, um, and there's one on the other side. Great, so that's a backup means of communication. I think, I think, I think, I think, I'm, I think I'm onto something. So let's let's start dressing this up a little bit. So uh, the hitchhiker again is not gonna go up. It's just gonna be what you see here. Uh, I'm not gonna put RCS on this craft. It's gonna be just a station. It's gonna be passive for any kind of docking. I got the question, Kermie says, uh, without RCS, but no RCS, but there definitely will be lights. I see, yeah, lights, definitely lights. We'll get to that in just a second, but I'm just gonna see if I need to reposition. Uh, let's put this container, take the radial off, single symmetry. Just, just moving around containers a little bit. See if they look a little better. Uh, I got colors. Let's put on green and orange. No, let's make that green. Green is for stuff that we like to consume. These are oxygen containers. Um, I got them on four-way symmetry. Let's see if I can find a nicer home for them. I think just like that's okay. And then these are nitrogen containers. We'll color those ones orange. I'm always a big fan of just any kind of differently colored little greebly bits you can put on there, the better. <laughs> so there we go. I think I think that kind of works. Um, I know what I'm thinking about. 
I am going to put a water recycler on this thing at some point and for a water recycler I do want to be able to hold water so I'm going to take another one of these small life support boxes. We're going to put on single symmetry. Equally space these two. That. Uh, and this one is just for waste water. Wet waste? Yeah, water waste. So it will hold water waste. We'll color it. Gorange, don't, don't drink this one. <laughs> Okay, that should be good. Because we want to, if we're gonna start recycling the water, we need a place to hold it. I think that's all right. Uh, let's see textures. Yeah, let's go with that darker texture on that one. This I don't think. No, I'm gonna keep it white. This I don't think you can change texture, and there's not much I can do with textures. Okay, this doesn't have no. All right, uh, let's close this off. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll say... Oh, lights! Lights! Oh, for goodness sakes, lights! Lights! How can I forget lights? So... Um, I'm assuming this is the top. That's going to be forward. So this is the aft end. So this is the starboard side. And if it wasn't before, it is now. <laughs> and so we'll put on a pair of lights... And we'll make these, uh, that one needs to be green and it's going to blink. And we'll blink at a half second interval. And I think I'm going to tweak its position just a little bit. Slide this into the battery a little bit. I can tell more from the other side. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay. And then we'll remove the symmetry on this one and just simply make this one red. Okay. And then we got to put some lights on the other side for the exact same idea. So this is going to be a little different. We'll put them on the, whoops, outside like that. Again, oh, I'm not quite that way. These ones clearly have to be white and blend in. Again, these ones will blink. Half second interval. This one will be green. This one will be red. So I'll remove the symmetry, make it red. Uh, solar panels can occlude one another. We'll deal with that. John says, be careful with the solar panels because clearly, like for instance, if you're pointed straight into the sun, the ones at the back here can be occluded by the ones before it. But uh, I, got, I got me a cunning plan. I think I'm going to be able to deal with that. But... One thing at a time. I think I should move them so they're further apart than they are in either case. But uh, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, lighty lights. Uh, let's see here. What about getting... I just want to light this a bit. What about if I take just a couple of these. Kind of plunk them in here. Oh, I just put the blink on. Light on. I don't want them blinking. A little hard to tell inside here if that's going to be... I'm just thinking of something that will light up the sides a little bit. Tilt them downwards a little bit. That should be good. Change the texture to white because it's kind of white there. And we'll tweak them into the body. should be good okay and some lights the other way too exactly the same idea except just pointing the other way this way did I turn these ones off by the way I did not okay um, again we'll tilt them downwards a little bit Actually, maybe not. Maybe keep them kind of pointed upwards because eventually there'll be a hitchhiker at this end. Yeah, we'll keep them like that. And But we will color them white as well. And we will...
tweak them downwards. Um, and then finally, okay, let's reposition these, <clears throat> excuse me, these solar panels a bit. So I want to just spread them out a little bit. Whoops. So that can be a little more this way. I think it's okay that I'm kind of putting them into the Oh yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm having trouble with, there we go. And uh, the flappy door thing kind of goes over the, well, well, whatever. And then I move this one so it's about halfway between. You know what would be better? If I turn this just around the other way, and then the two door panels just are on top of each other rather than a door panel on top of this. All right, that's better. And then I can even move this a little bit further. There. So we minimize the amount of things clipping into each other. Okay, let's close that. Actually, let's save this. Because I think I'm approaching something that's kind of a finished product. 2.5 tons shouldn't be a problem getting it into orbit. Um, oh, you know what it needs. Oh, it needs flashy light on the bottom. Of course we need flashy lights on the bottom. You know what this thing distinctly lacks is any kind of hatch. <laughs> Other than the vessel that's going to dock with it, there's no way in and out. So that's something to be rectified in the near future. Tuck these two together. Uh, let's think. This is the aft end, so I'm going to make this one blink at half second intervals. Blink on. Yellow. A little, little with a tinge towards the orange. And this one, blink on, but more like a strobe. Did I, um, I'm not sure. I don't think I, yeah, blink's on. I'll make sure I did turn the blinking on on all of these. Blink on. Blink on. Okay. Um, and it needs a... Oh, I put one on top and the bottom. That's not what I meant to do. Shoot. That was a mistake. So what I'm going to do is just right-click on that, remove the symmetry, and remove this symmetry. And actually, what I might just do, actually, just to distinguish between the top and the bottom, we'll make on the bottom two white lights blinking, but on the top, there'll be a white light with an amber light. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know my aviation lights too well, but <laughs> as long as it looks good, that's all that matters. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think we're onto something. I think we're, I think we're done. So, let's start... Let's save this, and then actually what I want to do, because what I want to do is I, I always keep a section in the v, like a file in the VAB that's when I build space station that is my station as I build it, and then I pull the modules apart. Now right now I'm just one module, but I want to keep this kind of in a stationy mode. So I'm going to save this as my WK, WK Memorial Space Station, and then I want to rename this core module and put a booster under it and launch this thing. So there's going to be two with this on it. Okay. Uh, gosh, I hope I'm right side up here. I think this is right. Oh, this is the... Oh, my gosh. There? Nope. Is that right? I have no idea now. No, I don't think it is. That way. This is the top. And that's the bottom. You can tell by the windows on this module, they're not quite centered. They're always a little bit towards the top. Okay, let's close things up. 
get this thing ready to go into space. Uh, retract. There we go. Retract. Retract. And retract. Amber's on the bottom, John says. Did I put Amber on the bottom or did I put Amber on the top? I put Amber on the, okay. I put Amber on, sorry, I'm looking at, John says, red left, green right, I got that part right, and ESA uses Amber on the bottom. Okay, so we'll put Amber on the bottom. This is the bottom. So we're gonna change, I'm gonna change the blinking period too. We're gonna change these to Ambers. Thank you. Actually, what I might just do is still keep one white blinky one and then just one amber blinky one. And then these guys, that's going to be white. And this one should already be white. There we go. Okay, a little bit of fixy fix. Okay, um, what I need to do is get this thing into orbit. So we are at about 2.5 tons. I need to obviously enclose this in some kind of fairing. So let's do that. I think so. Yeah, the docking the docking port can be used as an attachment point, so I don't need to put a decoupler on here. So let's go straight to a fairing. And I'm hoping, I think a 2.5, a 1.25 meter fairing should cover this. I'm hoping just to go straight up with this. That should be okay. Actually, I don't know why I did that. Delete that. Sorry. That was dumb. Um, and then we're going to take this docking port. We're going to put it into our staging diagram. You can do that, right? Yes. Enable docking staging. And actually, ironically, disable the fairing staging. So the docking port will act now as a decoupler. And on the bottom of this, I want to put a vessel. And... Da -da -da -da. Actually, sorry, I'm thinking while I'm doing this, which is always dangerous. I'm going to put a probe body on here. This is going to be the thing that's going to complete the circularization and get said vessel into orbit. Um, so I'm going to put on, if I can all find the right, where are small reaction wheels that's what I'm looking for there we go and so that'll all get enclosed in the fairing um, but this thing I wanted to have in around do about the last thousand meters per second of the orbital insertion and then maybe about another 70 to 100 meters per second to get it into its final orbit can I get away with a pug on the bottom of this that's a little bit underpowered, so we're going to step it up to a terrier. That's going to be fine. Arrange, oh, they are arranged by mass. Pug. The torch is... Okay, they're not arranged by mass. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's plenty of fuel. Maybe I can get away with a smaller tank. Do 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 about this one. About eleven hundred, a little bit more. That's too big. There's RCS fuel. I do have RCS fuel. What? Why didn't it? Sh oh my God! Whatever. Everyone's seeing that. See, I do have monopropellant tanks. I thought I did. Why am I not seeing the one that's smaller than this one? Let's just go by name. That's the one I'm looking for. That's in the right ballpark, what I'm thinking about. To handle the upper part of the insertion and, uh, and uh, placing this thing. And then it'll deorbit itself at the same time too. So in and around, yeah, but I'd say, yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. I'm going to put some batteries on it. 
just so that I don't have to worry about it running out of juice while it's on its way to its demise. But honestly, I'm thinking that's probably about the whole thing. You can color it up a bit. There we are. Yep, happy with that. Okay, I'm going to put some struts in here. Because I'm a little bit concerned about using just simply that docking port as a connection. So I'm just going to strut this a little bit like that. All right, let's build the fairing. Okie doke. And is there an ejection force on this docking port? Just thinking, of, you know what? I think I'll disable this as well. Where's the staging? I'll disable that staging too. So that when we get ready to deploy this thing, we'll just simply right click on that and un un undo it. All right. All right, that's about it. So all I need to do now is, yeah, this thing will deorbit itself. And thrust TWR, this is one that's fine. And let me see, let me see, let me see. What's the mass? Mass is about now five and a half tons. So let's get into my booster collection. Arrange these by mass. Now I don't need to get something that can lift as much as five and a half tons because the I only need to add on let me think about this 1200 if this can get up and around 3800 or so I think I'll be fine like in total yeah so how about if I use what is this skipper oh that's my skipper one booster that's I've used that before that's a little much, we'll have to fix that. What I say, 30, that's too much. I don't need that much. So what's my next one down? The swivel. That's a little on the light side. I also think it probably has too little thrust on that middle stage. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I might need to go with the other one just because it does this the, the swivel one doesn't have the oomph well this this one would have more oh let's delete the fairing just for now that's all nonsense this might be better this one doesn't have the delta v okay so it's gonna be the swivel one boost oh, wait no 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 sorry the skipper one booster this guy it's a little it's a little too much, but that's okay. Let's delete this fairing. Let's get rid of all of these struts. They're unnecessary. Um this these reaction wheels are not necessary. Hmm. I can clean this up. I need uh just some sort of actually. Maybe the fairing's not a bad idea. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe that fairing wasn't a... Let's put the fairing back. Control Z. Can I get it back? Yeah. Build the fairing and just kind of do this. And take it off the staging. So we won't stage it. And so the idea with that fairing is simply it's kind of like a cowling just to kind of clean that part up a bit. We can make it dark. I'm sure it'll look better dark. That's... That's, ah, is there not like a nice dark one? We'll go with that, I guess. <laughs> Fine. Be that way. Fine. Okay. But this has the thrust. This, 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 this. I think, I think this is looking like a thing. It's got a lot of delta V. There's not going to be a problem on that end. In fact, I might just remove some of it start from the bottom here to 
empty that tank. There, 4,300 meters per second total. That should be plenty. Mass and lift. Where's the mass? Yep. Okay, I'm just going to tweak the thrust to weight for that launch. There we go. Slap on, uh, slap on uh, John says, slap on some Starlinks and call it a day. <laughs> you just got to drop, I don't know, 50 of them at a time or something. That's all you got to do. God, I don't know what this message is. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Um, let's go through the checklist and make sure I have not missed anything. So, uh, I, I suppose... Oh, there's a station one I have. Oh, but I've never, ever... Okay. So I'm I'm gonna get rid of our checklist. Well, let, now let's go to let's go back to. The, I do have a station. I've never adjusted the station checklist. It's the so I've gone over the fine print. I think let's just make sure the fine print. That's always good to look at. So you got to orbit Kerbin. Got to be below 250 kilometers. I'll do that. You got to have a docking ports on it. Um, you got to have four Kerbals. I don't think there are any Kerbals in here right now. They're stuck yet out of there, you guys. Jeepers. Bring you up separate. Um, but there, it will support four Kerbals when we're all said and done. Uh, should be able to have solar panels. It's optional is the Cupula module and the mobile processing lab. Mo mobile processing lab. Neither of which I am anywhere near unlocking. So it'll go up without those. And then putting a Kerbal up for 30 days means put a Kerbal up for 30 days. I like these ones where the title is the same as the fine print. <laughs> and docking, just dock. Nothing else to it. Okay, so fine print's okay. Control should be good. KOS is on there. Pro body has been conf Oh, wait, no, it hasn't. Pro body has not been configured. There is a couple of probe bodies in here that don't require any science at all. It's not a big deal if you end up putting unnecessary science, but I mean, it does save you money and a bit of mass to take it out. Whoops. Back you go. And there was one up in here too. So I might as well configure uncrewed experiments. I don't want it to do anything because we've got all of this stuff around Kerbin. Okay. Good, good. Science has been taken care of. Power generation, electrical storage, antenna strength, been a speed, data storage. Uh, propulsion, yep, is fine. RCS is irrelevant. Parachutes are irrelevant. Thermal protection are irrelevant. Lights are on there. Upgrades, I don't think it's necessary. Thrust to weight's been dealt with. Fairing deploy, um, no, I have not dealt with it. Let's get into the action groups. Dunka. So with my launch script, I want this on action group number five. I also want this to be six-sided, step up the ejection force, and make it clamshell deploy. Um, I notice I lost my fairing down here. Fix that in just a little bit. Also on for action groups, on action group zero, we will toggle this antenna and we'll toggle one pair of solar panels. That's it. Because there's no reason to deploy all of them until it's necessary. Everything else I think can just stay closed. Okay, let's rebuild this fairing. There's really not much to it. There we go. Okay, so that was the fairing deploy. Staging. Check your staging. That's all good. It's pretty simple. And that is it. The rocket looks sick, says Maribar. <laughs> okay, let's put this to the test. Let's put this to the test. So simulate onto the launch pad and then we'll put some kerbals in it 
And of course, this won't be the end of the station. This station will grow and grow. I always like my stations to kind of grow organically as I need things, as opposed to, oh, that's, don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, here, let's launch, let's run the launch script. As I was saying, I like my stations to grow kind of organically. I never really have a plan. It's just as I need a module for something, I add it on there and whatever form it ends up taking as it grows is the form that it will take. All right. Deploy the wolf says depo deployable panels are breakable panels. That is true. <laughs> I have lost control of things and crashed into panels. And uh, yeah, it happens. But we have the ability to do repairs in space. This thing is only going into low orbit. And I have a lot of panels. So there's it's actually probably overdone a little bit. Yes, the contract, uh, Jaborn says, the con uh, the, uh, he was pretty sure the contract said that those extras were optional, and he's absolutely right. So the laboratory and the cupula module are completely optional. So it just means I won't be getting as much money and rep, but I mean, here, let's look over here. I just want to show you where I'm at. I'm at 3438000 curb bucks. I think I'm good for funds. <laughs> I don't think I have to worry about it. I still have a number of buildings at tier 2. I could probably upgrade most of them now, but whatever. I find the big there's such a big jump with the buildings between tier 1 and tier 2, especially for things like the launch pad and the VAB and the space plane hangar. I mean, you want to get those to like tier 2 pretty quickly, and then once I'm at tier 2, I find, you know what? I'm pretty good. I don't need to uh do too much after that. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. John says, click the contract now because it will show things that are, whether they're green or not. So if I go to launch my space station, lots of things are green, but you can see the support, it doesn't have the four Kerbals aboard or space for four Kerbals. I'm assuming support four Kerbals means it needs space for four Kerbals. But these here, see, are optional. So, we are good. Yep. All right, how are we doing here? How is our insertion going? I should be actually paying some attention. We have cut our throttle. And, oh, oh, that all deployed very nicely. I don't think anything broke. Of course, uh, the crash simulator is adding in all of the wireframey stuff. It won't look like that when it launches for real. All right, where are we at? We're almost at 80 kilometers. Oh, I just realized as well. That is not good. So I want to take out another 300 meters per second out of this tank. Um, because I want this tank to go dry. There's still a ton of Delta V left in this thing. So I'm going to take out 350 meters per second out of this lower stage because I want this to go dry before engine cutout. So here's what we're, we're going to re, uh, terminate the simulation. We're going to fix that and then we're going to launch it. I want that uh, lower booster to, so I said 350 meters per second, so I want this stage, where is it here? This stage here, I want it down to, let's say 2,900, maybe a little more than that, right? I'm, I'm, I'm subtracting, right? Didn't I say 300? Did I say 300 or 350? 350. 2,900, maybe a little more than that. Yeah, that's right. So let's take out fuel here. So 2,900, what happens if I just take that right out? That's too, that's, that's too little. 
that should be good. And of course that means that we gotta adjust the thrust to weight because the whole thing's lighter now. There we go. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch this thing for real. Testing time is done. So we're gonna save and we're gonna launch. And yes, I am sure. I am sure I want to launch. We are launching and we are getting into orbit. Nope, we're not going to load. That has to do with a tourist contract that I'm not going to worry about. Not at this stage anyway. So run that launch script. Uh, zero. Comma. Actually, let's get up to 250. I mean, not 250, I'm sorry. 120 kilometers. And then in. Because that's our f orbit that we're shooting for. So used to going to an 80 kilometer parking orbit, but we might as well go right to our final orbit here. All right, so this one's for real, but no Kerbals aboard, so should be good. You can watch there. Everything, what's this message up here? Some strategy availability changed. What's that about? I don't know. Not sure what happened. Oh, I might have. I think what I might have happened. I don't know. No, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Why all of a sudden I've got new strategies? I don't know. Okay. Flies well, though. I think this is going to be... I, one of the things I definitely want to start unlocking are bigger tanks. These are still my largest one point... Or, sorry, 2.5 meter tanks are these ones. So I definitely want to start building bigger things. This is still not really big by any stretch of the imagination. Dorn says, but... I, uh, uh, Dborn says that the strategy changes from selecting other strategies that block certain ones, but I didn't. I didn't think that notification was there a few minutes ago, so I don't know. All right, we've nerfed our thrust. Building up towards Apoapsis. And again, we're going to go up to an apoapsis of 120 kilometers now because that's my orbit. 120 kilometers is below the first radiation belt. If you're going to play with Kerbalism, you're going to put up space stations. You definitely want to make sure you do not put your space stations into the radiation belts. I mean, unless you're in that, into that sort of thing. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. And if they're below the radiation belts, you don't really have to worry about shielding or anything like that. You do have to worry about shielding and stuff once you start putting stations around the moon and around Minmus because they don't have any form of radiation belt or any kind of real magnetic field. Uh, is it Freak's Hut? I think so. Freak's Hut says, how did this whole command prompt thing work? This is a mod called uh, Kerbal Operating System. It's a mod that allows you to write programs within um, the game. And so you end up writing scripts that you can then run from this terminal window. So I got my launch script that I wrote over a period of a number of years that uh, does the launches for me, which I'm really happy with. I really like, I use it a lot for repetitive tasks that I just do all the time over and over and over again. Um, there we go, that's what I wanted to see happen before was to lose that booster and just do the work on this little guy. I also have another script that executes maneuvers for me because that's something else that comes up a lot. All right, where are we at? Uh, 100 kilometers on our apoapsis. Again, once that hits 120, we're almost in space.
That's we done that. And once we're in space, it's going to create a circularization node here. 166.3 meters per second to complete our orbital insertion. And there's still 995, so I severely overbuilt this thing, but that's okay. Um, the lights didn't come on. I thought the lights would come on. It says the lights came on, but they didn't. Lights. There we go. Yeah, lots and lots of blinkiness. Okay, uh, how far are we? We're still four minutes away from this, this burn, so let's get up there. I'm not I'm curious just I don't know how much I'm gonna play with this what's our inclination at inclination is 0.1 degree should I worry about that Nah, I don't know maybe I'm very close to where the equatorial ascending node is so I can fix it okay just about to do our final circularization There we go. And we are going to be getting our Kerbals up here too before this day is out. So I don't need to design that ship. That ship is already built. I just need to modify it just a little bit. Okay, so let's see how it does. Close enough, 120 by 120. And program has ended. And I think what I'm going to do... I am one minute, just over two minutes away from the equatorial ascending node here. So what I want to do, I'm going to tweak this thrust way down. Let's put this out of the way. I'm going to get to the equatorial ascending node. I'm just going to zero out my inclination. It's at a, a 0.1 degrees. We can't abide by that. So I'm going to burr, put this anti-normal. And then we'll detach this fella, and we'll uh, deorbit it, and then we'll bring our Kerbals up. Okay. Just about at the equatorial, so I'm just going to zero out this inclination. Because I was so close, I thought, figured I might as well. Need more thrust. Come on, inclination. There it goes, a little more. There. So our inclination is now 0, 0.0. We'll take our script. Should be able to run our alignment script to align up our solar panels. And otherwise, I think this fella is looking pretty good. It's just, it's just turning the panels so they're perpendicular to the ecliptic. So that they'll always remain. That looks good. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'd say that's it. So let's take this. And we're going to delete that. We're going to close this. Oh, and John was talking about solar panel. Um, that the solar panels might occlude each other. And a solution, though I don't need it now because I don't have these other panels up. But just to show people the solution, I got a mod installed called Persistent Rotation. And if I open up these little settings here, you can turn the reference body. How do we do this? Dynamic? Uh, ah, relative rotation, and you can turn the red reference body to the sun. Might as well do it now. I think I just did it right. Activate? I remember running into this before. There we go. Okay, it's activated. So now the reference is to the sun, and this thing should keep its current orientation with the sun now. It should. Whether it will or not, I hope it does. But because now if I extended these solar panels, they'd all be more or less perpendicular to the sun, I shouldn't run into panel oculation. All right, what we're going to do, though, with all that done, is we're going to decouple this. Oh, that was a little more violent than I would have liked. 
and we're going to put you onto the retrograde vector. Put up that thrust limiter. Let's just put, put away a little bit so this fella can deorbit. Oh my god, it's got quite a lot of fuel still. Oh well, whatever. <gasps> whatever. Easy enough to bring up more fuel. Okay, and just want to take. Oh, what? Whoa, whoa, what the heck happened there? Well, all right then. <laughs> That's going to give our Kerbal something to do. Why on earth that just happened, I don't know. Actually, everything looks a little bit borked down here. Oh, shoot. I don't know why that happened. That looks like a Kraken attack. Look, the, these batteries rotated. Okay, I'm going to take this... I, I, I am I am blaming you I am unset I am blaming I don't know exactly how but I got me a feeling persistent rotation thought it would be a giggle to take all of these batteries and rotate them and that kicked off a couple of the solar panels Oh well. <laughs> Who builds these things? Oh my gosh. Oh dear. Okay, let's run that alignment script again. It isn't disastrous, I suppose. Annoying, but not disastrous. This looks really goofy now at this end. Something happened as well with the... Um, the transition piece between it's like it flipped around I think that's what happened there was a uh, structural piece here between the docking port and here and I think it's flipped around the other way too okay I'm it I'm it that's it I'm not using okay let's turn this off I don't know I'll deal with that at some other time somehow I guess <laughs> let's get back to the Space Center that was a definite Kraken attack. But I think that was a persistent rotation related Kraken attack. I've had funny... Th Every time I use... I swear it's like a coin flip when I use persistent rotation to do something. That something really, really goofy happens. And maybe I should just not use it. But we're going to send some Kerbals up there anyway. That's what we're going to do. Because it is what it is. And we're going to open up. Uh, my ship is the. Do, do, do this one. The Terrier 1 A3. This ship has carried Kerbals before. Um, let's just take the booster off for now. And um, in fact, it, it has quite a lot of Delta V. 1800. Though it's going to handle part of the... Well, by the time it gets into orbit, it'll have about a 1,000 meters per second of Delta V left. Um, and, uh, like, this thing's flown past the moon and stuff. So I've used it before. And so I'm figuring out... I'll, I'll just use it for this. What it needs, though, is it does need RCS. So here, let's take off this. It's going to need a docking port at the top. Just gonna modify this right now. Docking port, coupling, docking port. Right at the top, like that. It's going to need, oh, it has, it does have some monopropellant already aboard, probably because I put a fuel cell on this thing. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. So all I need to do is put on some RCS blocks. And I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this. Um. I do have, oh, we have different ones. Restock's thrown in some RCS blocks. Nice, nice, nice. So restock is thrown in some RC, oh, are these the stock ones? Yeah, these ones only have a thrust. Doo -doo -doo. Where are we here? I saw the thrust, a 0.1 kilonewtons, which is not a lot. That one, these ones are one kilonewton. 
I wish there was one sort of in between these ones that are, like these are a tenth of these ones, but I find these ones are often just too big. But these ones are a smidge too small, but you know what? I think we'll just live with them. I think we will. Uh, what kind of symmetry I got there on the bottom? I got six way symmetry. Oh, that can be fixed. So what we're going to do is just put on... I mean, it doesn't really need that much. It's just for docking. Put that on four-way. Well, that's three-way symmetry. Four-way symmetry here. And I'm going to take these lights and put them on four-way symmetry in between rather than six-way symmetry. And then I'm going to get another pair of the same docking ports. Ah, this is going to be an issue. Okay. And the issue is, is that these ones are further away from the center of mass than the other ones. But I might just say, whatever. <laughs> oh wait, I got RCS build data board. Oh my gosh, I forgot I had that. Okay, never mind. I have a mod to help me out. I have a mod to help me out. I do. I do. Can I change the color of these or anything? Or just, no, I can just change the orientation. I, I like what they are, so I'll leave them. So what I think I might just do is I got four of those up there, but I'm going to get the stronger ones down here at the bottom. Ah, oh, I don't like how big those are. Oh, well. And we're going to severely turn down. You know what? Screw it. Let's put, the, I don't, let's put the small. I just hate how big those are. And we'll turn down the thrust on the top ones. Actually, what might be a good idea, I, I, I know I'm talking, is to put six of them down here. And that might compensate nicely for the fact that the they're closer to the center mass. And then these can go back to six-way symmetry. Let's see. Let's turn on RCS Build Aid. RCS Build Aid is a wonderful little guy <laughs> to help you um, tweak your RCS. So, like, for instance, right here. It's saying that if I thrust to the right, um, I'm going to induce a torque of 1.25 kilonewtons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thruster block and see what happens if I start to turn down that thrust. Yes, and that's bringing down the torque. So we're going to bring that down, and that has to do with the fact... I am completely backwards on. I should have put six of them. Oh my gosh. Not having a good day. Okay, let's put six of them up here. That makes more sense. And four of them down here. I had them completely the wrong way around. Were there people in the chat pointing that out to me? Probably. There's always people in the chat picking this up quicker than I do. Okay, now let's see what's happening. Okay, what's our torque now? Our torque is 0 .4, 0 0.415 kilonewtons. Kilonewton meters, I should say. So we'll turn these down. Yikes, I'm turning them down a lot. There are six of them up there. Okay, so that's for the right. For the left is the same. Up is the same. Down is the same. Forward doesn't matter. It's all symmetric anyway. Backwards is the same. And then you can get into... Good, 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 good. Okay, RC... I, I think that's good for RCS. I suspect that will work just fine. So let's put this all back together again. Booster back on the bottom. And this fairing needs to come all the way. Is there a KOS probe core on this guy, by the way? I'm not convinced there is. This might have been from before I was regularly using. So I'm going to sneak one in there. The KOS probe core. I, I think this predates when I introduced KOS into this series, so nobody's to know the difference. There we go. Okay, let's build this fairing. 
Uh, bum, 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 bum. Edit fairing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that was good. <laughs> How did I do that? And will it let me? Okay, no. Place that and can I close this off nicely? Come on, let me close it. Let me close. There. That looks good. Okay, let's check the staging out. So let's turn off our checklist. Uh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Then that comes on and oh my gosh, this is, yeah. Let's get into action groups and see what's going on there. So for five, we're going to deploy Activate the engine on the launch escape system, but we need to decouple this node at the same time as that. Yep. And on zero is, I must have had this on. Maybe there's two probes and probe bodies in there now. <laughs> Toggle the antennas. Okay, that's fine. I'm assuming that's okay. I'm just going to put on, again, because this is just a docking port holding this on. And if I, I trigger, there is a, an abort action group. And if I trigger that abort action group, this could go. But so I'm just going to put some there. That'll hold that together better. Okay. Staging sensible. I don't know what the heck is going on here. Oh, I know why that's like, okay, so these ants are backup engines. This doesn't need to be in the staging. Parachutes, that's the decoupler for the capsule. These are backup engines, which technically it kind of doesn't need anymore. And this is the, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> okay, so, oh my gosh, what is that in the curb buck display? Somebody's asking, what is going on down here? And I'm just noticing it now. Um, I do have a strategy which adds costs to um, all my launches, I think I can't remember. So I think that's what's going on here is it's adding a cost to this launch and we just can't see all the numbers. Um, I think all the launch costs are doubled if I'm not mistaken, which I don't care about. And that's part of the media madness. And what it means is I get extra reputation and stuff. So it's a way of sacrificing funds to earn more reputation, uh, which I'm perfectly good with. Uh, as far because I have so much fun. So that's what's going here. I just think the display is kind of messed up That's all Okay, uh, I am ready to I think try go for this so We have RCS available Is that Terrier that's here on full throttle probably yes I think it should be good I just am a little concerned about the staging, but I think I think it's all good. I, I and I'm also thinking I'm just going to go for it. Now, who's going to be, who's going to be our peoples? Well, Jebediah and Bill have already jumped the gun, and you know what? I think you're going to be our lucky, our lucky, lucky peoples. I think you're going to go for it. I'm just going to go with what's said there because I do need an engineer for the contract, and uh, Jebediah, why not? Of course, they're going to be up there for 30 days. So we won't be seeing them for a little while. All right, so uh, yeah, let's let's launch. Let's do it. It goes down. Okay, so that cost goes down as you add parts. I'm not really sure then what's going on there. That's what Voodoo Cat said as as asking in the chat. 
There is something weird going on there, but I think it has to do with the strategies. I know I have a strategy that does affect the costs of the launches, but I'm not exactly sure. I most certainly have two pro bodies on you. Aren't I special? So, oh well. I don't know where they... There's two of them hiding in there now. <laughs> ah, that's okay. So run the... Not that, dummy. Launch. And I'm going to go into an 80 kilometer orbit. And we're going to... Because we're going to have to do a rendezvous. Alright. And where is our station? Our station probably isn't a station at all. What is it? It's, it's that. Okay, we're going to have to rename some stuff when we get up here. But that is our target. All right, let's time warp until it is just past us. So that is what we're rendezvousing with. Our rather crackeny station. here that's all good that's all good that's all good i don't know i i got i'm very used to because i always put my stations into 120 kilometer orbit so i'm very used to launching just as this gets to the end of the little birdie icon and it just seems to work for me nothing too uh, sophisticated in that all right and i think we're all good <laughs> This is actually a very similar booster to the one we just used to put up the station, but it is slightly different. Um, it has these tapering, there's more of this kind of tapering down to 1.25 meters going on to fit onto the terrier that's there. So it's kind of the same, but a slight modification. We'll call this one the Skipper 1A and the one that we put up the station is the Skipper 1B. Bill has a mustache, yes. <laughs> I like that look for Bill. Alright, so... Much the same. So coming up through the clouds. Do I have a smart part on there? I do. That should have been the giveaway that I have KOS installed when I see a smart part sitting there. That smart part takes care of the staging for me. I just couldn't remember when it was, how long ago it was I last put Kerbals into space. It's been a long time. But it's hopefully going to become a regular part of streams to come. Clouds are looking particularly nice today. Okay, again, cutting a thrust. Okay, Bill and Jim here. I should put this on here. Keep an eye on them. And... Yeah. Okay, so at 40 kilometers, this thing should lock on to prograde, though I think it's proceeding very well. Yeah, I do want to get into bigger, bigger launches. Bigger engines, bigger launches. Put some... This is just a start for this space station. I'm a little bit... Ner I don't know. Maybe I didn't test it because I'm looking at the stream time and I want to get this done and docked and everything before the stream is done. So that's why I just kind of went straight into the launch. But I'm always a little nervous about the staging. But I think it's okay. At 50 kilometers, we're going to stage the fairing and lose the uh, escape tower on here. Which looked for a second like it wasn't going to go, and then it did. <laughs> so that went okay. And let's see. how. Oh, we're almost ready to lose this. There we go. And now we're on to a little Terrier engine. And it has as backup propulsion a trio of little ant engines, which 
if all goes well, I shouldn't have to use. They're, they are completely there as backup. Uh, because at the time, if this engine failed and I had Kerbal stuck in orbit, like that's a bad scene, right? Now they have uh, RCS, so there's actually three means of propulsion on here. So we have backups on top of our backups, okay? We have just cut off because we reached our target apoapsis. So let's time warp out of the atmosphere. Whoa, there we go. Get a little bit closer to that burn. Okay. A little bit closer. There we are. Okay, 10 seconds. Is this going to go to full thrust? I do like this little ship. But it only holds two Kerbals. And I don't have any pods that hold more than two Kerbals. So I, I definitely want to start moving in that direction as well. If I'm going to start putting Kerbals in space more often. I'm wondering where that other KOS probe core is. Got it hidden in here somewhere. Oh, one other thing. Ah, shoot. Oh, well. I don't know. And... Where have we got here? There's our orbital parameters. That is very, very nice. Again, we'll run that alignment script. I spelt the line wrong. That's always a bad sign. Somehow a line suddenly has an H in it. There we go. Did that without too much drama. Okay, let's get ourselves to the station. Let's see if we can do this at record speed. That's what I want to do. Oh, that was way too much. Okay. Feels about right. Okay, so what do we got? About 1.8 kilometer separation. I'm only going by half second intervals, come on. All right, 600 meters separation. I think that's good enough. Do, do, do. Um, let's just get to it. Yep, put this on here. I think I'm not going to use KOS for any of this stuff. I think I'm just going to do it. Prograde, and let's just nerf the thrust on this just a little bit because it's a very short burn. That's pretty good. And we'll put this on rendezvous. We'll just do it from here. So it's a little closer. And uh, it's, the burn time six seconds, but I'll start the burn six seconds before it says I should, and then we'll just go to half throttle. I think it's always a good way to handle these shorter burns. Okay, and now I can take a look at my rendezvous stats. And we can probably use a little RCS to tweak this. No, I, I overcooked it. Now I can see that.
Okay, 700 meters. There we are. It's pretty good. Okay, RCS off. I will just... Oh, wait. Jeb has a go lock to normal vector. I don't need to use KOS to do that anymore. There we go. Okay, we got the rendezvous coming up in six minutes. You know, one thing I forgot to do... So you get into these things and show the actuation toggles. If you turn off the yaw, pitch, and roll, that means that when you just reorient the vessel, it won't be using the RCS even if you have RCS on. I think that's a good tip for saving monopropellant. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, if you don't do it in the VAB, the symmetry comes off. Roll. And then that way, RCS is only used for lateral translations. Uh, there's six of them up here. Show RCS, take the yaw, pitch, and roll off. I should have done this in the VAB. I just forgot. Yaw, pitch, and roll. Roll. Yeah, pitch and roll. Uh, I think I got one more after this one. <laughs> yeah, pitch and roll. All right. Uh, okay, what are we at? 15 minutes from the station. Let's go. I go until I'm about maybe two minutes or so away. Turn this to target. Swing that around to retrograde and we should be. There's the station. Oh, that's our freaking solar panels. <laughs> I was just about to say, I wonder if I can collect them, but I don't think it's worth my time. Okay, I can see I need to bring this this way. That's bringing down our closest approach distance. And always when you're doing this, you want to watch your time to your closest approach and make sure that that doesn't become unmanageable. That suddenly you find yourself blowing past your station. I think I need to blow it a little closer this way. Separations now down. Oh, about 170 meters. I think I can probably get a little closer. Yep, for sure. Oh, I know why there's a bit of a stutter happening is because we're coming within the render distance of the station. That's why. All right, we're. Closest approach is 50 meters. I think that's good. We're going to select our docking port here. We're going to control it from here. You can see our busted solar panels blowing away down there. I'm probably going to get in and delete those. I don't want to go recover them. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should send these guys out and go to recover them. I mean, we still got 1,710 meters per second left in the vehicle. These guys can do a lot for us. Get in here a little closer. Okay, we're only 30 seconds away. To really start slowing down, shouldn't I? Because the moment you can't push up this time to closest approach is the moment you're probably going to go blowing right by it. Or worse yet, run into it. I think I got a lot of ignitions on that Terrier, right? Yeah, 34 ignitions. I must have upgraded it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cheapers, creepers. Some... See what I mean? <laughs> Sitting there looking at the terrier, not paying any attention to what the heck I'm doing. Okay, uh, let's let's. That could have gone really badly. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Now, where is 
Here, let's spin around retrograde one more time. I'm going a little quick. Ah, oh. what happens when I talk and do this at the same time? Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, let's uh, aim our camera here at the station. So that's our docking port we want. Set that, reset the camera, uh, spin this around. Okay, hang on a second. I thought I had. Okay, let's slow down again. I thought I had a uh, little n control from here. Okay, well, I might have to do this the kind of old school way. I thought I had a little mod for lining up the docking ports, but I do not see it. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I can see I'm not coming at it. this way camera here at the front oh where's the aim camera button and all this there it is yeah I, I have a docking alignment indicator mod at least I thought I did and uh, it seems to have vamoofsified on me Am I lined up all right enough? I think so. Come on. There you go. There you go. I'll have to find out what happened to my docking alignment indicator. But either way, these guys are aboard. And, oh, if we take a look at our contracts, I didn't even think to look at them. I should have had these open all the time. Let's go to our space station. Our first docking is complete. That is good. We have our launch curb and station. Uh, this supports four Kerbals. I don't know what you're talking about, but there are two spots there and two spots here. I can put four Kerbals up here. Why is that still red? And then I gotta wait for two days. I'm perfectly fine waiting for two days, but as far as I'm concerned, unless somebody can point out it's not recognizing something, unless somebody can point out why this isn't four Kerbals here, I don't know. Well, whatever. Our engineers aboard. Maybe we'll bring up that hitchhiker can sooner than I think I'm going to. And then our have a Kerbal up for 30 days. That requires me to be up here for 30 days. Let's, I'm hearing, let's rename the station. I agree completely. So we'll open up these little doors here. There is a pro body down there. Uh, there it is. Rename the station. This is the WK Memorial Space Station. Uh, that's it, and it's a station. The WKMSS. So we are now aboard the WKMSS. Everything I think is good. I think what I need to do is I think I do need to... Let's just check to make sure. According to our stats here, they have 179 days of food, 52 days of water. That's less than I would have thought. And 403 days and 5 hours worth of oxygen. I'm not sure why they don't have as much water as it was showing me in the VAB. But you know what? That's going to have to be a problem. It's not far to bring up supplies up here. So, uh, yeah. I'm the, I'll try and figure out why the 4 Kerbal requirement didn't come in. But, you know, for now, I think... We're going to call this stream done. We got our Kerbals up here in space. We will be adding this to this station in the future as well. I think next stream, I really got to start generating some more science. But all of that is going to have to be for next week. So everybody have yourselves a fantastic weekend. And we'll see you all later.